Greetings, greetings, my peak performer. How are you doing? I hope that you're having a great day. It's the start of a new year. Yay. And I'm excited. I'm excited for me. I'm excited for you. And I look forward to the great things that we're going to be doing together. We're going to be exploring the wins that you're going to be having and just how you will deal with your low points as well. It is episode 148 of the Entrepreneurial You podcast. I'm your host, Henneke Watkiss. Porto. Today's episode is with Paul Edwards. Paul is an international best-selling author. He's a podcast host and mastermind leader, husband, father, and combat veteran. Paul connects young men in the worlds of software, tech, and digital entrepreneurship to find their warrior tribes of personal and professional development. So I'm really looking forward to the conversation that we're going to be having focused on business beyond business, becoming a radically generous entrepreneur. Welcome, Paul. Annika, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. Awesome. I'm really, really happy to have you. Before we go into our conversation, what's your favorite thing about Jamaica that you perhaps heard? Have you visited, by the way? I've not yet had the chance. Uh, I've been trying, I've been working on my wife for years now to do uh, one of our uh, vacations in the future in the Caribbean somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, The closest I ever got to it was coming to the Bahamas as an infant and Uh uh, have not had the chance to come back since. So, um, but you asked me what was my favorite thing. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Everybody I meet from that part of the world I, I've never met a negative, pessimistic person from the islands, from the, the Caribbean. They always just seem to be full of the joys of life. And uh, I'm thinking now of another podcast I've been on with a lady by the name of Lunid Louis from Haiti. And same thing, just sprightly, pleasant, you know, infectious optimism seems to come out of the people of that world part of the world so that's my answer (laughs) oh well good answer yeah (laughs) yes that's that's something that's apparently in our dna you know what i mean um it's i guess from being in a tropical space you know Mm -hmm. the warmth that comes with that so both figuratively speaking and in a literal sense so yeah (laughs) thank you for sharing that paul all right so we're going to be talking about business beyond business and you know how to become a radically generous entrepreneur that's of course you know, about your book it's going to be centered around your book but before we even go into that i want to hear a little bit about who was teenager paul and and what did you want to do when you grew up really <laughs> oh boy that was a that was a different time that was so I'm uh, I'm 39 now, uh, turning 40 this year. And if I look back to that time of my life, um, it's 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 in a lot of ways it's the polar opposite. Um, if I were to look at it from the context of my faith and what I believe personally, but um, if you're talking about what were my hopes and dreams, um, the the one thing that I've never been able to get rid of in my life, uh, couldn't put it down, couldn't stop doing it couldn't even when I was uh, going through depression and anxiety and all that kind of stuff is writing. Um, I was born to do it. I was raised to do it. I was taught to do it. My father was a writer. Um, So I guess creative expression. And at that age, in my teenage years, it very much centered around music and theater and performance. Um, But I was always... I always had a creative inkling. I always wanted to create content and write and make an impression on people. So I guess that's, I guess that's probably the short version of the story. Well, that's, that's, you know, sums it up pretty, pretty well, I'm sure. No, um, you are, you alluded to the fact that where you are now, perhaps is quite different from, you know, your teenage years. Was it that you had some wild teenage years, you know, vis-a-vis know that you're a person of faith? Yes, I I wouldn't categorize them. Uh, when people hear wild, they they can mean several different things. Um, I tend to think of mine as wildly uh, reckless and destructive, um, but only to myself. I wasn't going. I wasn't like uh, going around vandalizing property and blowing things up. But I was. I, I just I I suffered from a uh, a 
a very deep chasm of personal emptiness and didn't know what to do with all this energy and didn't have any sort of direction because I didn't have uh, a, a connection with God at that time. So um, I went out and did, made a lot of decisions, in, usually in the snap of, of, of fingers like many young men do, but they were a lot of very poor, very ill-informed decisions. Um, and I'm not beating myself up. I'm just c- trying to describe for you how it is. But that's, um, that's why I say it's, it's very much a polar opposite from, from where I came from. Mm-hmm. And now you're centered by your faith and, you know, that faith walk. What has that been like for you? Because as a personal faith myself, I know, you know, there are ebbs and flows and it's not always a smooth sailing bed of rose. Um, how has that been for you? And, and how has your faith, like, one question at a time, like, how has that been for you? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's gone through a very interesting evolution. If I were to describe it at its present state, um, you know, the, 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 the introduction of masterminds into my life over the last three years, uh, is really the focal point because what happens to us when we're alone, when we're uh, solitary, cre- we're not meant to be solitary creatures and we're not meant to figure out life on our own. Um, the Bible makes that pretty clear, but you know, as a practical matter, how do you circumvent that? How do you get around the fact that our culture, especially American culture, is is very Americans are very prone to living isolated, lonely lives, um, and and masterminds have really t- given me a total reversal on that. Um, so I would say, r- r- right at this present moment, walking out the faith is very much a community affair. It's very much a life lived in openness and transparency before others. Um, it's very much one that is causing this this significant separation between my higher self, right? All the creative energy and all the gifts and talents and the and the good part of me, and my lower self, the destructive, you know, punk within that I have, um, that that frankly just needs to be taught, hogtied every day. Mm-hmm. I am glad you segued into what we, you know, going to be talking about too, and and it's being part of you know mastermind. In fact, I connected with you through Aaron from View from the Top. You know, mm-hmm. another um, awesome, amazing person. Now, as someone who is a part, you're a part of a mastermind, and you did allude to the fact that you know it's it's it forms part of that community that you need. Um, kind of like really literally iron sharpness iron and you know you need one we all need each other what Mm -hmm. looking back on your life now um, looking back on your life you know and compared to where you are now what are some of the tangible benefits that you have seen coming out of being part of a mastermind and you actually leading one as well right yes Um, so if I were to put it simply I would say Every time I actively, consciously choose to make an investment in a mastermind group, my life gets uh, exponentially better. Mm -hmm. And every time I choose to not make that investment, my life gradually, but over a long, sustained period, just gets worse and worse and worse. The, The first mastermind I was in was an insurance mastermind. And the best thing I got from it was not to talk about insurance. In other words, what uh, my mentor, Jonathan Garrick, told me to do in that time was to make myself personable, relatable, accessible. And people would figure out by looking at my Facebook profile um, or by receiving my business card what I did for a living and then make the determination. And so I went from being a pushy salesperson, you know, stereotypical American insurance salesman. You can see it in the movie Groundhog Day if you want. Um, I went from that. To, to creating this magnetic pull that, that brought people towards me because I was a value adder and a generous giver and thoughtful and engaging and interesting to, to be around and to learn about. Mm, interesting. And so now we can go into business beyond business because when I looked at the chapters of your book, I think that's what you alluded to earlier when you said that, you know, you started out being an awkward, pushy salesman. So mm-hmm. let's delve a little deeper into, you know, 
what that was like and, and how did you transition from that into um, thinking about, you know, becoming a really, really generous entrepreneur? Well, I, I mean, it, it, all you have to do, I think, is pay attention to people's reactions to your, your efforts to persuade them or build relationships with them to notice that as soon, if you start trying to force that decision to happen, it's going to blow up in your face. And that's certainly what happened to me. Um, people began to avoid me in certain situations, you know, because they knew all I was going to talk <laughs> about was, you know, insurance and who handles your insurance and would you like to try my insurance and all that. And um, I, I, it just wasn't working I, and I wasn't satisfied with it. And, you know, especially if you're driving to a networking event, paying for a meal and an opportunity to interact with people and then driving back, you're using all that time, right? And all of that effort and putting your best foot forward. And all you get from it is people, you know, oh, there's Edwards again. Don't, don't go near him. All he wants to talk about is selling. So I said, well, there's got to be a different way to do this. And it took me a while to figure it out. But once I started just sharing what I knew that was applicable to all entrepreneurs, not just insurance salespeople, and once I started sharing my personality and my sense of humor and my, uh, and my family, right, photos of my family and that kind of thing, and made myself human and real and accessible and, and, and you know, interesting in my own right, um, people began to come to me and refer their friends and family to me rather than me having to go out and say, hey, buy this, buy this, buy this. Um, and I've never looked back, uh, no matter what I've pursued since then, business wise, the one thing I know is you, you cannot force relationship to happen. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do business through relationships, and most of us do, you have to develop it and cultivate it organically. And you do have the ability to, uh, to, to make a good solid first impression. Absolutely. And so I guess that's where chapter two would be picking up from when you talk about um, that monastic heart, be a magnet, not a pusher. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, the, the, the heart of the monk is, is, is totally benign. It's, it's always inclined towards uh, self-sacrifice, honor, integrity, uh, closeness with God, but you know, even if you're going to leave that part out of it, but you're going to focus on the other parts, um, that's still going to work for you. The ability to to practice what I call a benevolent detachment, right? Simply to just be kind and show up consistently. Um, it works in business too. It, it, it the the ability to to be hands off with people, not to apply pressure, not to not to feel that urgency and that you know that that anxiety. Um, 85% of, of communication is subliminal, subconscious, nonverbal, um, and some of it is, is totally invisible. You can't even pick it up through body language. But if you have that inner turmoil going on inside you, people are going to sense it somehow. Mm -hmm. And um, I just learned over time to have less and less and less of it until now I have sales conversations that are, you know, I, I've never had such an easy time having sales conversations as I, as I do now. Well, you know, go ahead. Yeah. We all have that experience with that, <laughs> that pushy salesperson. And of course, you know, we, we try to avoid him like the plague, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I get that. I get that. And you have in, in your book, you talked about, you know, the, the being the magnet, you talk about, you know, not being pushy, and now we're moving into chapter three, and I'm really recommending that everybody gets get to your book and, and read it. It is an interesting read. Uh, pro bono publicity. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? I mean, everybody's trying to earn. You're, you're talking about giving away stuff. What, what are you talking about, Paul? Well, in a way, it's the, very much the kind of exchange that you and I are having right now. Right? It's, <laughs> it's, it's an opportunity to, for hundreds, thousands, or even just a few more people to hear my voice and to hear what I'm about. Um, and that's one of the reasons I, I podcast is it, it, it's, I, you know, I like seeing downloads increase and all that kind of thing. I'd like to one day use it as a, as an advertising vehicle and all that and, and attract the right kind of sponsor. But, but really what, uh, what podcasting has done for me over the last couple of years has been, I'm able to network 
like I used to network just in, in the city I live in. Now I network all over the globe with people. And, and people are drawn towards an opportunity to talk about themselves and what they do and gain exposure in front of a bunch of people that they currently don't have access to, particularly if you don't charge them a penny to do it. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> so um, now podcasting is one way you can do this. The way I used to do it was I would go to businesses where I was interested in, in one day becoming their insurance agent, and I would do a, a promotional video of their business and interview the owner with my phone. Or uh, real estate guys, right? You know, they, they have their open houses and their brokers opens. I would go to them and then I would do video tours of the house and put that on my Facebook page rather than talk about insurance. I was like, I need anything useful to someone else besides myself that I can put out there and, and that'll gain some interest on my Facebook page. And so real estate tours made a wonderful way to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things that you talk about the, 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 the podcasting and what he has done for you, um, that's the reason that I am now writing the book that I'm writing and will be published this month called Podcast Power, um, you know, this quick start guide to leveling up and launching your, your brand. Because I also recognize having just, you know, started podcasting just in 2017 and the result that I've been able to have as a result of uh, just being a podcast host. So I totally get that. Now, mm-hmm. part of your book also talks about not for profit is for profit. What do you mean by that? In other words, what do you mean by that? There's a Jamaican vernacular just coming out, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I love I, I love trying to figure out what two Jamaicans are saying to each other when, <laughs> I, when I hear them. Because I, I hear an English word every so often and then yeah. everything else is, is strung, strung together, bits and pieces of it. It's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I just asked, what do you mean by that, right? Did you what do you mean by that? that? Okay. Yeah, what do you mean I'll, by that? Mm-hmm. I got I to gotta work on my Jamaican dialect. But, uh, yeah, I'll teach you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not for profit. See, this is the thing. Um, profit is the result of delivering X amount of dollars worth of service. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I used to say I want to make a million dollars. Now I say I want to provide a million dollars worth of service. Mm, perspective. Um, so not for profit is, is in, that, in that sense is a tremendous investment because, of course, you're not getting paid to do what you do. Now, now if you're the paid um, you know, executive director of a huge nonprofit, then, yeah, you're probably getting paid. But most nonprofits are volunteer organizations uh, a great many of them are, volu- are the volunteer staff are usually entrepreneurs who have the bandwidth and the freedom of schedule to participate in that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So there's already a pre-existing environment you can walk into there and you'll end up, you, know, you don't go in there with the motive of making money, but it's a byproduct of it. By, mm-hmm. by, by virtue of the fact that you're participating in something those people care about, right? And you're contributing money or time or resources to that effort and you're showing up consistently. Uh, I've just seen it happen over and over again. I just, we keep running into the situation of, Hey, uh, you know, it's, you know, we're at a board meeting. Hey, I ran into a friend of mine the other day and they were complaining about their current insurance agent. Um, can I give them your phone number? Absolutely. You know, it's just, it's a byproduct. It takes place in the background. You don't go there with the intention of doing it. Um, but I found that by consistently showing up, in, in with civic organizations and nonprofits and that kind of thing, I just got so many opportunities to start and cultivate and capitalize on relationships as a result of it. And I, in many of the cases, the only thing I really did was show up and, and run my mouth for a while. You know, <laughs> I, I wasn't, it wasn't like I was digging ditches and all that. I mean, you could do that, but, um, but a lot of times it was just by by being present and reinforcing and giving them a sense of strength in numbers and support and dedication. And it works out. All right. So you have three other chapters, which um, we won't get into all of them. And I just uh, say the name of those chapters for our audience. Uh, owning it, how to network with the dream connections, frequency, persuasion in print and decreto, focusing on the outcome. Now, I want you, uh, Paul, at this time to bring our conversation home 
as we talk about being a radically generous entrepreneur, because I know that there is a particular mindset that has to come with that. Because, you know, if you, if you believe that there is abundance in this world, then it's easy for you to have that generous, you know, giving mindset. But, um, when you think around lack and you're, you, all you think about is, you know, how much I have and I don't have enough to share, then you will not be generous in, in the things that you do. How does one really become a generous entrepreneur? Well, uh, the way I like to look at this, Henneke, is a couple of things. I've got a, a short story, and that is um, t- coming up on three years ago, two years ago, sorry, um, was when I was fired from my last insurance job. Um, and and I won't. I don't believe in sugarcoating, so I'll just say I was fired because for six months straight I hardly sold anything, and they they had a right to do what they did, and it was a business decision. And well, we parted amicably, but uh, you know they had a right to do what they did. And um, the day I announced it on Facebook, an avalanche of instant messages and texts and phone calls poured into my phone. I couldn't stop it. I all I could do was sit there and watch the phone as person after person after person after person wrote, we're hiring, we've got an opportunity. If there's anything we can do to help, can I connect you to this person? Can I help you find this person? Do you want to enter to the hiring manager here? Do you want to come and work for us? It it was overwhelming. I had never seen anything like it in my life. And it just goes back to that whole issue. You know, there's, there's, I, I like the concept, the concept of of bootstrapping and being a uh, and being an indivi- a rugged individualist. And Americans, we love that, right? But the truth is, there's no such thing as a self made man. It, it it doesn't exist. Your customers make you. Your allies in business make you. Your family makes you. Your teachers and mentors make you. All of that comes together to comprise the man or the woman who's who's leading a business. And you only scale on the strengths and talents of the people you leverage around you. And therefore, I say, if we're going to, if we're going to build a successful operation off of relationships, then it makes all the sense in the world to be as generous and giving and present and sincere in your motives towards those people as you can. So I would, you know, I, people knew me for that. They knew that for some reason I could make a phone call and make things move. And the reason I could was because I, I, I didn't wait for other people to invest in me. I went ahead and invested in them. And then the, it creates that, that sense of reciprocity. So it wasn't necessarily about, I, oh, now I've invested in you. Now where's my cut? It was now I've invested in you and now somebody, I want to invest in someone else over here and I want you to be part of that too, right? So it, it's, an, it's a never-ending, ever-expanding universe of potential and possibility with, with you know, seven to eight billion people on the planet. I mean, the, the sky's the limit in terms of what you can create. And, and really, I mean, if you put uh, prosperity and wealth in the right order, right? If it's not at the absolute top of your priorities, it's important. It's not that we neglect it or ignore it or say, you know, the hell with it. It's just, <laughs> it's, it goes in the right order. It comes after people and, and integrity and um, quality of your work, right? And that's why I say I'd rather provide a million dollars worth of service than actually earn a million dollars. I'd like for, I'd like, I'd, ideally I'd like to do both. But before I can command that kind of money, I need to provide that level of service. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the only reason the market ever pays for it, really, if you ask me. Mm. So actually giving the value, um, you know, so that, of course, persons will see the benefits of doing business with you. And it's not just about the transactional um, you know, events or activity, it really is about building relationships and recognizing that, you know, in all of you said, no man is an island. We need each other. We need to be in community. We need to develop an attitude of giving and Mm -hmm. in this, you know, abundant universe that we live in. So I really am appreciative of what you've shared with me and my audience thus far, Paul. And as we are about to wrap up, (laughs) Yes, our conversation has come to an end, believe it or not, huh? 
I'm going to ask you to share, because you did say to me that you have giveaway for my community. I'm going to ask you to share that and also share how they might get a copy of your book, Business Beyond Business, and where else they can find you online. Absolutely. Well, the best place to go is my website, which is the Paul S as in Sam Edwards.com, the Paul S Edwards.com. Now we've created a special page uh, just for fans of the entrepreneurial you podcast listeners to this episode. If you go to the Paul S Edwards.com forward slash entrepreneurial you um, there, you will get, first of all, you get a free digital copy of business beyond business come straight to your email. Um, I also include a couple of handy tools. This, this is, these are helpful. Even if you've been through stuff like this before, you should do it again. You should do it periodically. Um, there's a personal assessment, uh, a spouse survey. If you're married, that's an important part uh, of finding out what it's like to live with you, right? And, um, and then uh, the other one is a, a goals and dreams worksheet. And it, it'll just help you to periodically assess who am I, what do I want, how, how is it to be, to live in close proximity to me? And, and that'll give you some idea of things that you a need to work on or B uh, are doing really well at. Um, and I recently decided to include a 15 minute strategy call on top of this. Um, cause Aaron and I have, uh, have accelerated our relationship. And so I'm very active in the iron sharpens iron mastermind. And now we're going to be launching a new, uh, young men's mastermind um, called um, ISI Emerging Man. And I want to be deeply involved in that. And so if, uh, if any of you uh, young men in the audience, particularly if you're in the worlds of uh, tech and uh, web developer, programmer, tech entrepreneur, that kind of thing, um, I'm, I'm intrigued by your world. I know very little about it. So it's, a, it's, it's as much an educational opportunity for me as it is for you. We may as well get together and see how we can help each other. And that's free. All you got to do is go to thepaulsedwards.com forward slash entrepreneurial you. Wow. So much goodies you have left with us, Paul. I am particularly interested in the spouse survey. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. And I really appreciate you. Thank you so much, Paul Edwards, for being on the Entrepreneur Review today. Hanika, thanks so much for having me. It was great to be here. And thank you, my peak performer, for tuning in to this episode with Paul Edwards. I look forward to connecting with you next week. In the meantime, I have a really, really big announcement. Yay! I am launching a membership program. I have launched a membership program for a one-time payment of $30. You can get access to it. And this includes, it's an 18, uh, video, 18 video recordings of CNN featured, et cetera, experts from four countries over four days. And they dropped significant value bombs when I had the Entrepreneurial U SME virtual conference and expo. So I'm giving access to all 18 episodes for only $30. I'm super excited to share these because I know it will be meaningful for you. This is great, not only because it will give me an outlet for sharing these new types of episodes, which I really have been wanting to do for a long time, but because it will give you a way to support the show and make it even better. Every dollar made will help to make the show better. It is quick and easy to sign up. So if you want to become a partner, just go to glow.fm slash T-E-Y. Remember, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win. Prepare.